Co-managing partner Bain Capital, Jonathan Levine, joining us now here at the LSE event. The first question I have to ask you is the kind of the big picture one. Coronavirus on a lot of people's minds right now. What is your risk tolerance on a scale of one to ten? What is it, and is it being affected by what is happening with the virus? Well, it's difficult to put something like the coronavirus on a scale of one to ten because people don't really know what it is and how bad it can get. Obviously, the tragedy of people who are dying um, is is something we cannot lose sight of. But I think that countries are taking the steps and have actually been very proactive in trying to contain this. And I really think nobody could possibly understand the impacts and until we see how it plays out and is the quarantining work, do they kind of find some sort of vaccine. So we are studying it very closely and looking at it carefully. Okay, so what are you learning? Supply chains are going to be affected. There probably will be some sort of macroeconomic effect of this. Is your sense at this point that both of those two sort of phenomena are going to be temporary or do you think it's going to be a more medium term story? I, the data in the States looks pretty good at the moment, but that's rear view mirror. Will this kind of affect that story? The best you can do is look for proxies and, uh, and other examples. And obviously, SARS had quite an effect, but it did prove to be temporary. And it, you know, um, we were able to move on from it. So as I said, I think it's so early to tell. Clearly, in the short run, um, I think it's going to have an impact. If for no other reason than the uncertainty of it will have a massive psychological effect. And I think the next two to four weeks will be really, really important in understanding how long it is here to stay, is it contained, and what the impacts are going to be. The other story that's obviously dominating the agenda overnight is what's been happening in Iowa. What is your sense of how the political landscape in the States is going to do to the markets over the next uh, sort of few months as we run towards November? If Bernie Sanders is the candidate for the Democrats, how will that be taken by the markets? So I think the Iowa lack of vote count um, is, is clearly not a positive. It creates a little bit more uncertainty. I think there's only a certain level of, of um, focus this early in the process on the Iowa caucus. Um, it's obviously an important to establish who the lead candidates are as compared to establishing who the winner will be, although often the winner does come from Iowa. Um, I think the markets more broadly are going to look for the winnowing of the field and then do a present value calculation of the, of the policies perceived for each of the, of the candidates. And I think that there are candidates um, who the markets might view as more uncertain. And there's candidates the markets will view as, as, as more positive and more certain. They will then take both of those and decide what's the likelihood of that person beating Donald Trump. I think it's early. I think the ball will bounce a lot of different ways. I also think one thing to look out for is uh, to be elected, you need to be the president of all Americans. And the question is, are we going to start seeing as people become the front runners, even some of the more ideological people, are they going to start having more of a narrative of middle ground? Does the US economy stay on track as we approach November? Clearly, this is a big story for the president. He needs to keep the economy ticking along kind of around 2%. Anything below that is going to start to become problematic. Are we late cycle? How late cycle? And is that going to be a problem in 2020? So working backwards, you know, we could be late cycle. Um, but if the cycle is 30 years, then we have 10 years to go. So it's unclear. I always have trouble putting a timeline on it. I would tell you that things look pretty stable right now. I would put it in the good, not great camp. Um, what I worry about is the longer in the tooth that a cycle gets, the more fragile it gets. This cycle has withstood a lot of uncertainty. And the question is, um, what is going to be the exogenous event that tips that over? Is it going to be the coronavirus? Is it going to be something that happens in uh, something that happens in, in the election. Is it going to be a hack? Is it going to be a weather event? There's just so many things that could change that picture. But based on the available information right now, I think it's going to continue to bump along for a while. Sustainability dominated the agenda in Davos. How much is it dominating the agenda at Bain? How important is an ESG rating to you right now as you look at, uh, at the terms and the pricing of credits? How do you think that's going to change? In terms of its importance, is ESG going to become almost as important as a credit rating? So the short answer is 
I actually think in less tangible ways, that has always been true. I think there's firms that have things they will and will not do and have drawn lines in a lot of different places. Our, firms got, our firm got rid of plastic water bottles in 2011. Seemed like a crazy small gesture back then. We just did a calculation. We think we've eliminated 2 million water bottles um, across, um, across our firm. So making good conscious decisions for the environment, for your communities, and for your companies is part and parcel with good business. I think that everybody will get better at defining what that is, what the direct impacts are. And I think the key thing on ESG is going to be measurement and measurement of impact. Not cost benefit, but actually degree to which you can accomplish what you want to accomplish. But I think it's really, really important for all businesses to consider that. The world is changing. This is a place where businesses have a role to play. And I think that it will prove to be good business.